Thank you very much. Um, yes, I just want to run through a few safeguard, uh, a few more housekeeping issues. I think there's a, can we move to our first slides? Um, thank you. Um, so yes, so as, as has been mentioned in this session, we do have child and youth speakers. Um, actually, this will be the session will be led by um, by children and youth. Um, I will disappear in a minute, and then and then it's over to them. So so please be um, be courteous and uh, and and kind, uh, and and listen closely to what they have to say because they do have a lot to say. In terms of the interpretation. For those of you who are joining this session, we do have Ukrainian, French, and Arabic uh, interpretations. So you can click on on the uh, the little globe and and choose if you would like Ukrainian. Um, I just also wanted to to highlight that. In some of the presentations, there are some photos that might be disturbing for some to see. Um, they are the reality for, for the children that we have joining us today. Um, so we think it's important to include them. But if anything is triggering to you, you can put a message in the chat uh, or direct it to me specifically in the chat. Uh, and I'm happy to follow up with you after to make sure everything is okay or to have a conversation. So, so please do, uh, please do just be aware that that is going to happen. And we, we are mindful of making sure that everyone, uh, everyone is safe and and uh, has and their well-being is prioritized. So please do. Please do bear that in mind. I think the the rest of the housekeeping has already been noted because it's just gone gone through. Um, code of conduct, be professional. We know that respect confidentiality and also um, be listen uh, actively. And please, if you can keep your cameras on, it is more more enjoyable for all of the young people who are presenting to not be presenting into a void. Um, and the others, I think we've we've already said, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Uh, we will have a Q&A sessions, a couple of sessions. So please do feel free to put your questions in the chat or raise your hand and I will pass them along to, to Dola. There is an opening poll, is that coming through? Anyone? Um, yep, or is it's that in the in chat the, now? It's in the chat now. Thank you. So please do do respond to the opening poll in Mentimeter that is in the chat. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the Ukrainian uh, version of that, but we have English, Arabic, Spanish, and French. So please do do uh, answer that poll if you can, and. I think that is all for me, and I will turn over to Dola to for her opening remarks and to chair this session. Um, hello, everyone, and assalamualaikum. So maybe it's somewhere it's good uh, afternoon or somewhere it's morning. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I am Dola. So currently I'm working with World Vision as ambassador and besides this in World Vision Bangladesh, I'm working with the youth forums to establish child rights and child protection. So today before starting our uh, session or our workshop, I would like to ask you just a question and you have to remind it till end of the session. So my question is all of you when you were a child, like when you were a child, what was your dream? So that's a question to you, but I will take the answer when before ending our sessions. So welcome to all of our session. And today we are going to discuss that how young people and us are working to ensuring child protection and how we can actually work on that or what kind of challenges we are facing. So I hope that today we are going to have an amazing day and with the amazing session, and it's gonna be a more effective and productive one. So today we have some kind of outstanding speakers with us who are going to share with you that how 
about uh, working in their own countries. So let's meet our speakers. Sorry, Dola, I think so we forgot to run we the video. Our, uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. So can you that, run it down? No problem. So maybe we can first, we can see the video, then we can start with the, again, with the intro of the speakers. Children and young leaders around the world are change makers. Millions have joined us in the fight to end violence against children, and they've led the movement. Ending violence against children isn't an easy task, but these change makers won't stop until it's done. Child marriage, child labor, discrimination, sexual violence, child soldiers, FGM, online sexual exploitation, cyberbullying, access to education. It's time to listen and take the action they're calling for. It's time for change makers. Yes, thank you. So that's the actual story of our change maker. So where lots of um, young people are working with us from different kinds of countries. So let's back to our again into session like who are going to join us as a speaker. Our first speaker is Mariana, who is 16 years old from Walvision, UK. And she is working currently with us about the UK refugees things. And our second speaker is Victoria, 15 years old, child advocate from Ukraine. And our third speaker is Modanem, 14 years old, child advocate from Ukraine. And our fourth speaker is Jason, 19 years old, ball visions change maker from DRC. And our fifth marvelous speaker is Miredi, 10 years old, ball vision change maker, one of the most youngest speakers. So those are the speakers who are going to talk with us about their activities. So I would like to request our um, speakers, first speaker, Mariana, to come forward and talk about that, how child protection concerns and what do you think that advocating for the donors, governments, or humanitarian organizations are actually doing or what kind of things they need to improve. So Mariana, over to you. Hello, I would like to ask my my PowerPoint. Thank you. So uh, let me start with, oh, great. I can, I can control it. Okay. Let me start with today, we are witnessing the unfolding of a child protection crisis. And after the beginning of the full scale invasion, oh, give me. Great. After the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine on the 21st of February, almost two-thirds of Ukrainian children have been displaced, and it is one of the fastest displacement of children since the Second World War. And I'm among those displaced Ukrainian children. I moved to Poland with my mother and younger sister on the 2nd of March 2022, and a month later, I immigrated to the UK, so I'm aware of issues that Ukrainian children face inside and outside Ukrainian territory. And among those issues that Ukrainian children are facing right now, there is a fact that they are in a grave danger of physical and psychosocial harm, um, especially children who lived through eight years of conflict. Um, they already endured violence, experienced acts of um, acts of war and they've seen shelling and heard sounds of explosions. Also, children who experience absence of absence or loss of a family member um, are in severe psychological distress. Um, also, many children are showing signs of significant distress and the threat to immediate to their immediate and long-term protection and well-being is of a great concern. The other issue is that educational establishments are being attacked every day by the Russian military. 
However, Safe Schools Declaration and Article 50 of the Fourth Geneva Convention oblige parties involved in a conflict to minimize military force to schools and thus provide a proper standard of education. Nevertheless, according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Education and Science, 3,259 educational institutions were damaged by bombing and shelling, meaning that access to safe education has been severely disrupted for all 5.7 million children in Ukraine. This may lead to a significant loss of learning that will impact children's long-term prospects. At present, despite the efforts done by the government of Ukraine and neighboring countries to ensure children continue learning through online platforms, children are facing numerous challenges, including lack of safe spaces in Ukraine, um, displacement, language barriers, special educational needs, and the lack of psychological support. With regard to my personal experience, and experience of my friends who are similarly displaced Ukrainians. I want to emphasize that none of us received any form of psychological support from a school or college, as well as measures to overcome a language barrier were not provided to anyone. And now let's talk about recommendations. Uh, firstly, safe spaces with the provision of psychological support should be provided inside Ukraine to reduce the negative impact of horrifying experience of war. This can be done through funding and volunteering. And secondly, efforts should be done to ensure students are able to complete the full academic year, have access to transitioning and bridging programs during displacement as means of successful integration into local schools and are provided with robust academic and psychosocial support for the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mariana. Like, uh, what kind of recommendation and what kind of things you have shared here? I hope our participation or audience who are with us, they heard about that. And maybe in the uh, INGOs or people who are working on those issues, they are going to take a review on that or we're going to work on it. So our next speaker is Victoria. So uh, the floor is your now. So can you please share with us your thoughts? Uh, yes, please. Can I see my presentation? Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, so, uh, hello, my name is Victoria. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm from Ukraine. I'm 14 years old and I'm a twice refuge. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I was born in Donetsk, one of the most beautiful and the largest cities in Ukraine, which have been under Russian occupation for nine years. Next slide, please. When I, was four, when I was six years old, in 2014, the, star, the Russians started the war and uh, I became a refuge in Bakhmut. Next slide, please. It's really beautiful and glorious city, but the hour, the, over the past year, the Russian has raised the glorious city of Bakhmut to the ground and nothing has been left. Uh, we managed to escape, so now I'm fine. I um, live in the Bilatserkva, in the Kyiv region. But when I arrived in Bilatserkva, I was actually depressed and really anxious about the war. I have no friends uh, and no communication, which is really important to me. And my mother uh, found out about the program support for internally displaced person created by NGO girls with the support of World Vision. And uh, it was really incredible. I found new many friends thanks to this program, new hobbies. I realized my interest that I like English, history of Ukraine. I visit all the events because for me, communication is really important. Uh, it was really interesting to visit Ukraine therapy where we deepen my knowledge of Ukraine. English speaking club, it was really useful. And honestly, my pronunciation now really better thanks to this speaking club. Also, I attended really interesting and important lectures on sex education because unfortunately at school, no one pays attention to this topic. So it was really necessary and important. Um, I want to say what I, I should probably say what I don't like to this project. But I liked it all. Everything was interesting and important. It was really pleasant to communicate with all teachers because they listened to me and took my interest into account. 
I want to say we we just children who live under the permanent stress and under the threat of war. It's really it's really scared to live now in Ukraine, and we need this project uh, to continue like our lives and continue our childhood. And next slide, please. I recommend it to continue social liberation measures, educational measures, psychological and legal support for those regions of Ukraine with the largest number of forcibly displaced people. Also, I recommend it to continue to support uh, ch shelters and provide first aid to displaced people. Also, continue to provide employment to war victims and internally displaced persons. Because I'm a twice internally displaced person it's and for me it's really really important so thank you thank you so much for being with us like you are having lots of challenges but still you thought that maybe it's important to talk about that and you thought that maybe it's important to share it here so thank you so much for for being with us so let's see like what when we are going to do open discussion what they are going to say thank you so our next speaker is um uh, our next speaker is going to talk about the same topic that what kind of challenges she is facing in her in his own country so mudana it's up to you now maybe you can share with us your yes can i see my uh, presentation center <clears throat> so we can start right now uh, one moment. <clears throat> so, hello, my name is Badana. I'm Ukrainian and I'm 14 years old. I never saw I would face a war. Next slide, please. I am from Dobropila. It's a small, picturesque mine town in Donetsk region. For me, it all started back in 2014 when grad rockets flew out my uh, house. I was too young to remember it, but uh, even then I realized that the war was here. The armed force managed to drive the invaders away that time, but in 2022, the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation began. Next slide, please. On February 24th, everything changed for me. The world sank into a black abyss. The situation was getting worse every day, and in March, I leave my hometown with my mother and grandmother. My temporary refuge was a beautiful Nikopol in the Propetrovsk region. Next slide, please. It was a truly paradise on Earth, fascinating architecture, beautiful river and silence. That is until July when the Russians started shelling the city with grand rockets in the middle of the night. I still remember how first time I ran out into the corridor in a panic and started putting on my shoes, not knowing where I was going to run to. And if it was in Luans, every night the aggressors shelled the city with grads, rockets, uh, smashed and uragans. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Our rented apartment was on the fifth floor, so for safety reasons, we were hiding in the basement. I slept in the basement for a month, looking at the old ladies who also came to the shelter every night with a pen in my heart. Uh, in August, no longer able to be this horror, we packed our stuff and moved to the Biwa in Kiev region. But the next morning, a shell hit our house in Nikopol, and our apartment was simply destroyed. Uh, and second, on lower peak in the left uh, corner, you can see my house it, on the fifth uh, floor. My apartment was simply destroyed. Nothing uh, matter. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> but uh, next slide, please. I'm very glad I moved out from there. My creativity, friends, family, and the safe space in Biwa supported by NGO girls and World Vision, where I can feel like I'm among my own people and get help in time if I need it and help me to recover. Next slide, please. I finally started living in prison almost without fear, but I haven't seen my father for a year and it's very hard. He calls every night and sometimes I have to hold back my tears. <clears throat> Next slide, please. My hobby is drawing. I have been doing it for several years. To relieve stress and distract myself from problems, I start drawing. It doesn't matter what, markers, pencil or paints. I draw everything, whatever uh, comes to mind. 
I left my suits and fantasies uh, pour out on paper. On this slide, you can see some of my artworks. Next slide, please. What more I need? I believe that the war will end and I will return home one day. But for now, I need to develop uh, comprehensively have friends and support. This is the only way I will become a psychologically stable and intelligent person who will contribute to Ukraine's recovery after the victory. I believe in our armed force and our victory. Glory to Ukraine. Next slide, please. The best way for me to communicate is with those who I trust and those who can help me in a difficult moments is my parents, psychologists, teachers, and friends, because they are the people without whom it's too difficult to cope with emotion, emotional explosion. Speaking of external communication channels, these are messengers and chatbots where you can easily ask any question and get a quick uh, answer. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the world presented us with challenges uh, like uh, <clears throat> physical danger and the life, life syndrome. But uh, for humanitarian organization, I recommend in the future support children who are in difficult life situation due to the war and continue to provide support in the form of non-material assistance to children and adults, psychological consultation, social rehabilitation measures, execution, summer camps for children, everything that contributes to psychological stabilization of young Ukrainians and continue to provide material support like shelters and uh, humanitarian kits. So next slide, please. <laughs> I'm very grateful for World Vision for help and it's all. Thank you for attention. Thank you so much, Vodana. Actually, um, I'm just wondering that it's sometimes it's painful, like you, are, you lost your home where you grew up, where you have lots of memories or something like that. So we're sorry for that. And we hope that the situation will get well very soon, inshallah. So our next speaker is Miradi. So Miradi, the floor is yours. So maybe you can share with us your amazing thoughts. Bonjour à tous. Hello, everybody. Je réponds I am Miradi. J'ai 10 ans. I am 10. Je suis actrice du changement de la RDC. Je vais vous parler sur les pires formes de travail des enfants et des violences sexuelles. Dans mon pays, la RDC, beaucoup d'enfants ne vont pas à l'école. Ils sont devenus vendeurs. Comment je passe pour aller à l'école? Je rencontre souvent des enfants qui passe en route avec des bassins sur la tête, euh, avec de lourdes charges, en regardant sa vie. Et je me demande souvent, est-ce qu'ils ne peuvent pas étudier comme moi? Parce que moi, j'ai la chance d'aller à l'école. Pourquoi pas? Eux? Ils sont tous enfants. Euh, pendant que moi, je vais à l'école, et ils sont là à vendre, à passer sur la rue pendant que le, les parents sont dans les maisons assis, ils ne font rien. Et sur le, ils portent aussi de lourdes charges. En passant, vous regardez l'enfant qui porte une charge. Sans savoir l'âge de l'enfant, vous pouvez déjà vous dire que ce n'est pas normal. Avec la charge qu'il porte sur la tête. Et pour les violences sexuelles, il y a beaucoup de filles qui sont violées partout. Et pour ces enfants qui a eu vendre, personne ne sait qu'est-ce qui peut les arriver là où ils partent. Parce qu'il n'y a pas un adulte, ils ne sont pas avec le parent pour le protéger, non. Ils peuvent aussi être violés. Diable. Pour les recommandations, Euh, ma première recommandation est que le gouvernement doit s'attaquer aux causes profondes de la pauvreté qui poussent les parents à exploiter les enfants dans les pires formes de travail. Parce que les parents ne travaillent pas, ils n'ont pas de moyens pour prendre en charge leurs enfants. Donc, ils sont obligés de commander les enfants où les enfants n'ont pas de quoi se nourrir et, et même ils sont obligés 
d'aller faire des prostitutions, d'aller vendre aussi pour avoir quelque chose pour se nourrir. Et ma deuxième recommandation, faire appliquer les lois existantes et veiller à ce que tout ce qui exploite les enfants soit systématiquement sanctionné au moins 20 ans de prison. Parce que celui qui viole est comme quelqu'un qui tue. Et quand on va lui donner 5 ans ou 10 ans donc, de prison, il peut, après avoir payé de l'argent, il peut sortir. Il peut se dire que même si je reprends le même mat, elle, la peine que j'aurai ne me fera rien. Je vais sortir. Et quand on lui donne 20 ans de prison ou plus, il peut se dire que si j'ai refait la même chose, j'aurai la, la, la même sanction. Donc, il peut se protéger en disant que je ne vais plus faire ça. Et le gouvernement devrait employer davantage de travailleurs sociaux afin qu'ils puissent être déployés dans les communautés locales pour que les enfants des zones non urbaines soient protégés de la même manière. Ma troisième recommandation, introduire dans les programmes scolaires des notions sur le pire forme de travail des enfants. Il est nécessaire que les enfants soient formés à l'impact des pires formes de travail et que les parents euh, apprennent les effets négatifs de ces pratiques. Donc, quand un enfant est à l'école, quand il apprend les pires formes de travail, il apprend que, en quelque sorte le droit et, le, et son devoir. Quand il connaît son droit ou son, ou son devoir, il peut se dire que, que quand mes parents me font ceci, j'ai le droit de faire ça. J'ai le droit de dénoncer. Et ma quatrième recommandation est que assurer la protection des survivants des violences sexuelles. Parce que celui, celle qui est violée, se sent peut-être relâché de la société. Il se croit qu'il ne sert plus à rien, c'est comme s'il n'était plus un enfant normal. Alors qu'ils sont toujours normal, ils sont toujours des filles comme nous. Nous devons les réintégrer dans la société en leur montrant notre amour, en les manifestant devant eux pour qu'ils comprennent qu'ils sont toujours enfants. J'ai dit et je vous remercie. Thank you so much. Like you are the most youngest speaker with us, and maybe you just speak from too much poorly, politely, and that's totally important. So thank you so much for your presence and also for your experiences. So maybe now we can move on to our next session. Like uh, our dear our audience you have heard that how our change makers from around the world are working on different issues like uh Odana shared about that how ukraine actually destroyed her uh you can see destroyed her life and mariana said like what kind of things they need actually right now so it's now going to be open discussion session like our sure, um sorry dola can i interrupt i i think we finally have yeah, jason sure. in the session Oh, nice, nice. Good to see her. Uh, good to see him, actually. So, Jason, hi. Hi, So we get our another speaker who is Jason from DRC. So right now he is going to share her activities with us about her, yeah, about his journey, about his work and everything. So Jason, floor to you. Uh. Merci pour la parole, euh, Dola, et bonjour à tous les conférenciers. Je suis Jason, euh, young leader depuis la République démocratique du Congo et j'ai 19 ans. Et sur ce, il fallait que j'échange avec vous ensemble sur euh, la situation des enfants en rapport avec les conflits armés. Donc là, je parle spécialement de la question qui concerne les enfants qui sont affectés par la guerre. Donc, euh, en matière de sécurité, aujourd'hui, les... Euh, pardon? 
Est-ce que vous pouvez défiler comme ça, ça me permet d'être d'être souple. Ça, je voulais dire, en matière de sécurité et de protection de la face, le monde entier il souffre actuellement. Aujourd'hui, il y a la guerre en Europe, il y a la guerre en Afrique et je ne sais où. Mais moi, je n'ai connu que ça, en fait. Depuis des décennies, on, on est en train de subir la guerre et tout ce qu'on se casse. Si la guerre ne t'emporte pas, elle emporte ton espoir, elle emporte les personnes qui te sont chères, elle te prive de la nourriture, elle, elle brise ton éducation ou elle affecte ta psychologie. Ou plus loin encore, elle te laisse ça, ça un moyen de subsistance. Ce qui fait que c'est vraiment difficile, euh, c'est vraiment difficile de pouvoir continuer sa vie normale. Aujourd'hui, plus de 750 000 enfants, ils ne vont plus à l'école parce que c'est difficile d'étudier dans les conditions normales. Plus de 2100 écoles ont été euh, obligées d'être fermées parce qu'il euh, n'y a pas de conditions requises pour que les gens puissent étudier. Ça, 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 ça a des préalables sécuritaires. Il y a plus de 3500 enfants qui ont disparu dans les groupes armés. Il y a beaucoup de problèmes qui ont généralement affecté les enfants et tout ce qu'il y a comme violence en rapport avec euh, les enfants s'est manifesté et s'est multiplié à cause de cette situation de sécurité. Est-ce que vous pouvez défiler euh, Sur ce, je voudrais, je voudrais vous faire savoir à quel point il est, il est vraiment difficile de vivre sans espérance de vie. Parce que moi, j'ai vu des bébés grandir sans être allaités. Et j'ai vu des bébés nager dans les sacs de leur mère. J'ai moi-même, avec beaucoup d'autres enfants, fui la guerre, sans savoir où est-ce qu'on allait, où était la direction, sans savoir où est-ce qu'on allait dormir. J'ai euh, vu des handicapés, des femmes enceintes, des vieillards qui étaient en train de s'enfuir pour aller dormir à l'extérieur, pour aller chercher un abri là où ce n'est même pas possible. Et je crois qu'il faut vraiment que l'on puisse voir comment est-ce qu'on peut trouver des solutions qui sont palpables parce que les conséquences en rapport avec la guerre, ils sont, ils sont vraiment néfastes. Et il faut en sorte que tous les autres droits ils sont anéantis parce qu'il n'y a pas de droit possible s'il si, eh, n'y a pas la paix. Et si vous pouvez défiler, je serai André Congo. Sur ce, je pense qu'il faut, et tant que Jean Glider, et tant que victime de ce qui se passe, et tant que victime de cette guerre, je voudrais généralement recommander d'abord à, à notre gouvernement et aux autres gouvernements du monde qui, qui peuvent généralement voir ce qu'ils peuvent faire ou ce qu'ils peuvent accompagner sur ce, de venir sur place pour rétablir la paix à l'est de la République démocratique du Congo, parce que ça fait beaucoup longtemps. Et quand on a grandi que dans la guerre, on a l'impression que ça devient une partie de notre vie et l'espoir lui-même, il est mort. On ne sait même pas si on peut l'appeler la vie parce que le sens de la vie n'est même pas dans ce qu'on vit. Je crois, deuxièmement, il faut prioriser l'aide humanitaire, avis d'agir sur les conséquences et voir comment est-ce qu'on peut sauver les vies des enfants vulnérables qui sont exposés au risque dans les recrutements des groupes armés, aux violences sexuelles et tout qu'on sort. Il faut aussi soutenir et financer les programmes de réintégration qui sont destinés à lever les enfants des groupes armés parce qu'il faut que les enfants puissent quitter là-bas, puissent revenir à la vie normale. Les gens qui ont tout subi, je ne, peux pas, je ne peux même pas parler de violence pour les cas des filles, parce qu'elles vivent là-bas, on ne sait pas comment ça se passe, on ne sait pas de personnes qu'elles contractent, on ne sait pas de maladies qui peuvent venir. Alors, il faut vraiment euh, qu'on puisse financer ces programmes de réintégration et voir comment on peut euh, donner de la vie à ces gens qui avaient déjà perdu l'espoir de vie. Il est également important de considérer la protection des droits de la femme comme un élément central de prévention des conflits des alertes et des processus de, de, de méditation des paix. Parce qu'avec toutes ces générations qui sont passées, je crois qu'il est important de voir comment est-ce que les enfants on peut les prioriser pour qu'ils participent incessamment à, à ces programmes de lutte contre les conflits armés, pour les initier à, à la culture de la paix. Parce que ce qu'on apprend déjà comme récitation, ce sont des questions qui concernent la guerre. Mais il faut mieux que ça. Il faut qu'on puisse avoir des espaces, des tribunes d'expression possibles qui nous permettent de, de parler ou de, de garantir ce qu'il y, qu y a des possibilités rapport à ce qu'on a comme protection et ce qu'on peut aussi donner comme point de vie à rapport avec ce qui se passe, comme c'est le cas aujourd'hui. 
Et il faut aussi plaider auprès du gouvernement pour qu'il facilite un accès humanitaire rapide et sans entrave, ainsi que l'accès des affaires à des services et à une assistance de protection. Et d'assurer la sécurité et la sécurité du personnel et des biens humanitaires, parce que c'était horrible de voir que l'ambassadeur de l'Italie est mort ici. Et je crois qu'il faut, il faut vraiment que nos gouvernements puissent voir comment, dans la mesure du possible, ils peuvent sécuriser les humanitaires pour qu'on puisse trouver cette opportunité, cette possibilité d'être dans une situation normale et de voir que les gens peuvent voir aussi ce qu'on passe. Parce que la guerre, c'est toute votre vie, c'est toute votre histoire. Vous n'avez pas d'avenir et vous n'avez pas sur quoi croire. Merci beaucoup, Dola, et merci beaucoup à tous ceux qui m'ont suivi. I don't know what should I say right now, Jason, like within hours listening to you and maybe someone is translating one. So I was just watching your expression and I was getting goosebumps. So I hope that the situation will be um, going to be well very soon. And we are with you, actually. So let's move our, our next session. Like I told you before, we are going to have with our open discussion session with our all of the young leaders. So there we are going to uh, know about that, how we can actually work together and what kind of challenges or what kind of things we are facing. So it's going to be open discussion with the audiences, with our young leaders, like our young leaders have some kind of question to the audience where uh, maybe you can answer. And our audience, you have heard that how we are working, what kind of things we are doing. So if you have any kind of question to a change maker, they will love to, basically we will love to answer on it. So Erica, please look on the chat. If anyone drops any kind of question, let us know. And change maker, if you have any kind of question, you can raise your hand, then we are going to give you the floor. So there are some questions coming, coming in. So the first one is, do you have some any learnings on how best we can engage with you in order to be successful in advocacy for you and with you? Anyone want to give an answer on it? Like maybe I can um, uh, brief the question to you. Like the question is like, uh, how they can engage with us regarding advocacy work or uh, regarding any kind of things that how they, we can work or any kind of idea do you have or do you want to give them While you think about that question, maybe there's another question that, that is being asked. If you are president or leader of your country, what would you like to change for children? What would be the first thing you changed for children? Lola. Yeah, sure. Can I answer? I think uh, there is a question from, for everyone. Yeah, sure. Yes, there are questions for everyone. Yes. yes, Jason, you can go first. Yes, thank you. Uh, si, si vous êtes président dans votre pays, qu'aimeriez-vous changer pour, pour les enfants? Je pense qu'il faut... Il faut vraiment que les présidents puissent voir les affaires au même titre que toutes les autres personnalités dans le monde. Puisque déjà, avec les systèmes politiques, les affaires ne sont pas comptés puisqu'ils ne sont ni électeurs et ils ne sont ni représentés dans les cours de décision. Mais il faut maintenant qu'à ce niveau, les présidents puissent avoir ce sens de la protection de la face. Parce que généralement, ce qui se passe, c'est quelque chose qui affecte les adultes, mais qui affectent doublement les enfants, parce que les enfants, ils dépendent des adultes. Alors, j'espère que à mon niveau, si un jour je suis président de la République, je pourrais tout faire pour faire en sorte que d'abord, les enfants puissent être dans un environnement qui est, qui est sain, 
Là, je parle de la paix, parce que pour moi, la paix, c'est la maîtresse de tous les droits. À part ça, garantir les responsabilités de l'État aux, aux affaires et au plus, au plus profond et dans les profondeurs de nos pays. Puisque généralement, les aides humanitaires, et les décisions, ils s'arrêtent dans les grandes villes. Pourtant, il y a des enfants qui souffrent dans les forts du pays, qui souffrent dans des milliers éloignés de, de, nos, capi, de, de nos capitales. Alors, c'est pour ça, je pense qu'il faut, et tant que président, si un jour je suis président de la République, je vais faire de mon mieux pour faire en sorte qu'il qu n'y ait d'abord pas la guerre et qu'il y ait une situation possible de vie pour tous les enfants. Donc, une éducation possible, les logements, la santé et tout ce qui va avec. Parce que ça, tout cela, c'est sûr que les générations n'ont pas la chance de pouvoir évoluer. Je crois que j'ai même déjà vu le président de notre pays une fois et je lui ai dit ça, je lui ai dit ça ouvertement qu'il faut que le président puisse voir comment est-ce qu'il peut nous aider, nous les enfants à être dans une situation qui est normale, parce que ça ne s'arrête pas à la politique. Tout peut être fait, mais pour nous, les enfants, nous qui allons être des futurs présidents, qu'est-ce qu'on nous réserve comme étant une préparation Parce que nos vies ne, 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 ne reflètent à rien ce que ça ressemble à la vie. Mais je crois qu'à mon tour, il faudra que je sois d'abord président pour voir ce que je peux faire. <rire> Merci. Thank you so much. Maybe we Merci can move for Miradi. Yeah. Miradi, the floor is yours. Merci. Pour moi, si un jour je, deviens, je devenais président de la République, la première chose que je ferais, c'est de, de faciliter le travail aux parents. Pourquoi? Parce que si les parents ne travaillent pas, ils n'auront pas de moyens pour prendre en charge leurs enfants. Ils leur laisseraient toujours aller vendre pour gagner des sous. Et sensibiliser les parents sur le droit et devoir des enfants. Parce que si un parent ne connaît pas le droit de son enfant, il se dirait toujours que même si je laisse mon enfant aller vendre, c'est mon enfant. Même si tu, tu plaides pour lui, tu parles à la faveur de son enfant, il dira que ce n'est pas toi qui l'as mis au monde, c'est mon enfant. Mais s'il mais connaît le droit de son enfant, il se dira bien que si je laisse mon enfant partir tout seul dans la rue, lui laisser comme ça, euh, ce ne serait pas bien. C'est d'abuser les droits et les devoirs des enfants. Merci. Ok, so maybe we can go for the Victoria. I like to answer the question about the president of my country. Uh, if I uh, were the president of my country, uh, I would like to overcome the physical danger and uh, war and stop the war, as Jason said. Uh, it's really important to me to um, feel safe in my own country uh, where I was born. And uh, for us, it's really dangerous to live uh, here in Ukraine, to be Ukrainians, because the Russians mint uh, and uh, shelling us every single day because, because we are Ukrainians. And I want to be brave and uh, safe and just be Ukrainian. And um, I want to stop this war and um, overcome physical danger in our country. Thank you. Maybe now we can move for Rudana. Yes, I want to answer the first question about how to communicate with us. So I think it's 
one moment. <laughs> I think it uh, uh, should be free cha channels of communication with the possibility to submit a request or complaint anonymously. But because uh, these channels, messengers and chatbots will easily ask any question and get quick answer. Uh, it would be great that child's opinion was listened to as something important. For children, it's very important that their opinion be heard because they're the ones who suffer from difficult life situations. And we first of all need the, this support. So it's, it's maybe over. <laughs> yes, thank you. So Mariana, you are going to be the last. Run. Yeah, so I would like to answer those two questions, and I think that second and the first and the second one are kind of interconnected because the answer to the question what I would change if I would be a president, I would say that I would engage more with children and I would ask them what would they want to to change for their own, and I would like to bring an example of Change Makers Week uh, in which I was involved last month. And this event gave me an opportunity and other young leaders to talk directly with members of parliament of the UK and just to explain them what we would like to change. And I think that those events should be um, should take place in different countries so that governments can know what children really want to, to see and what their lives should be. That's it. And if you want to be a president of the country, if you are a president of your own country, then what you will do? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, so uh, I would say really create some youth councils and involve children so that they can talk and share what they would like to change. It is my main proposal. Okay, thank you. Yes. So Erika, maybe we have some kind of more question. Can you please read off that? And I would like to request our change maker. If you want to answer those questions, try to make it a bit short because we are also maybe running on time. Okay, there are a couple of questions. I think we can ask. One is a question has come through from Iraq. And what do you do you think that the structures um psychosocial support programs are important for children and need to be continued the other question uh who supports you most in your community through the challenges and who else is seeking to bring change so let's start with those Uh, may I ask, answer? Very again, that? repeat the last question, please. So the last question was, in your community, who is supporting you through the challenges and who else, uh, in addition to all of you, is seeking to bring change for children? Okay, so going to the first. Okay, Victoria, go please. Uh, no, I want to answer the question about is it really important for us is um, physical, uh, social relation or this last question. Psychosocial support. Yes, so, sorry, yes. Uh, I want to say that's really important for us, for children, for, for example, um, I have my little sister yeah, and she, she was really anxious and uh, depressed also and uh, when we went uh, to this program with social rehabilitation uh, courses it's really helped her and me and um, now we feel really really better now we a little anxious but uh, we don't have this this anxiety we um, have many friends and this is really important uh, social rehabilitation and support is also important because we live under the permanent stress. It's it's really hard. So I think it's really, really important and necessary in the war time. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Uh, 
Jason? Oh, yes, yes, Dola. Uh, yeah. I would like to answer the, the question of, of Brikena. I think it's uh, an important question. A rapport avec ce que nous, au peut demander aux organisations de faire, ensemble avec nous pour prêter à notre faveur. Je crois que. C'est très important de pouvoir nous engager généralement sur des actions continuelles. Déjà aujourd'hui, c'est une grande chance puisque on est devant vous pour émettre ces décisions, mais ça serait encore plus réel et opporté pour nous de pouvoir faire des pareilles rencontres avec ces autorités de nos pays qui ont ces possibilités de pouvoir résoudre directement nos questions. Mais même avec les bailleurs qui ont les possibilités de pouvoir accompagner directement les personnes qui sont victimes de ce qui se passe dans nos, dans nos régions. Puisque déjà, c'est difficile de pouvoir rencontrer ces autorités. Et ils ne répondent qu'aux objections de ceux qui les rencontrent. Mais nous, qui sommes les plus vulnérables, il faut qu'on trouve cette chasse d'être amené, d'être tenu par la main jusqu'à rencontrer ces personnes et leur exiger ce que nous, nous avons comme demande. Parce que quand nous souffrons, et ils ne savent pas, et ils ont besoin de nous attendre pour connaître, mais qui va nous amener là-bas Je crois que c'est vous qui devriez donner plus de possibilités pour que nous puissions être en mesure de rencontrer ces personnes. Mais même à le faire dans les campagnes qui sont, qui sont généralement faites. C'est par exemple aujourd'hui que c'est fait sur Internet avec euh, euh, notre campagne de Change Makers. Et si on le fait pareil dans toutes les villes, il y a des affiches partout où on fait passer ces mêmes messages il y a des grandes rencontres où on essaie d'être représenté possiblement, comme ça l'a été, par exemple, dans, dans les années qui sont passées, avec la session des, des Nations Unies, où il faut rencontrer ceux qui peuvent nous aider et ceux qui nous doivent les responsabilités de pouvoir résoudre les questions sur nos droits, de pouvoir avoir nos voix et de savoir que nous, on a besoin de leur implication afin qu'on puisse trouver ce qui nous revient des droits. Parce que euh, comme vous le savez et comme vous essayez de les lire dans nos yeux, ce n'est pas une situation pour, lesquelles, pour, pour laquelle on, se, on doit se plaindre. C'est pourquoi on essaie toujours de se plaindre parce que ça, ça ne va pas et on veut que vous puissiez toujours nous aider à avoir des opportunités de rencontrer tous ceux qui peuvent nous donner des réponses possibles. Thank you, Dola, and thank you for all. Thank you so much, Jason. Anyone else want to answer this question or otherwise we are going to move on our next session? Uh, like someone maybe asked, like, is it important to work on psychosocial things or not? Maybe I can say um, being a youth, right now it's become too much important like i'm a university student and when i uh, it's become tough for me to balance with the uh university will be depressed or sometimes i could suffocate it as well like what i will do i'm not i don't know like what kind of futures or careers going to suit me whenever i think those stuff maybe these things really hit me a lot and this like this uh, maybe last month we went to uk and there mariana uh, shared about that when they went to their schools or colleges as their accent are different from the uk's peoples so they also get bullied about that so maybe this thing really uh, hitting us breaking us mentally and emotionally as well so i think organization humanitarians organization who are working it's become a high time to give focus on those things like how we can work on mental health because mm -hmm. Maybe uh, if we get some kind of mental health support, you we can say like the rate of suicide or the rate of teenagers who are committing suicide, that's going to be decreased. So maybe it's important to work on it. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, who actually dropped your valuable question to us. So we are going to move on our next session like with our young leaders that how 
they are working and what kind of challenges actually they are facing. So I'm going to ask the first thing to um, Victoria. Like Victoria is working lots of things in her in her community. So Victoria, can you please tell us that what kind of challenges you are facing or how actually you are doing your work or what kind of uh, topic you are advocating in your country? Just make sure that it's a sweet reminder. Try to keep it in a uh, short so that maybe we can listen others young people as well. Thank you. Um, I faced with the challenges of, I, I've said, it's a physical danger and um, dialed uh, life syndrome when you live like you live right now, but you can't live um, all your life with all your soul, with all your uh, ideas, dreams. You live like, I live, I live, I wait for victory, I wait for some good uh, times and um, for children it's really bad for emotional uh, health because you know it's kind of it's kind of stressful you live under the air alarm you need to study you need to um, do your homework uh, you need to leave and it's really important to do some psychological support some events with uh, your friends when you can communicate and just have fun because we are just children we have no childhood now because of the war time we need uh, more um, events more social rehabilitation courses and more more communication because it's really important and necessary for children now so we can't um, do something with uh, physical danger uh, for my, I can't do something because I'm not like a um, soldier. I can just um, save uh, children's uh, children's um, you know psychological healthity, and this is. Uh, what i do thank you okay so maybe we can go for mariana mariana like you are from ukraine i know like um what do you think that what kind of challenges if someone want to start work in um you know, social activities or advocacy they work in you and like what kind of challenges they can face or you have faced or right now right now also you are in uk strain so there is any kind of challenges or things you want to share with us that maybe we can highlight here yeah sure uh usually i advocate for psychological support for especially refugees in foreign countries and i faced numerous challenges such as language barriers and also psychological harm and distress of being a refugee in a foreign country and social isolation is very important issue not only for me but also for my peers and you as i said usually i advocate for psychological support provision and some kind of social spaces to interact with foreign teenagers and to find some friends and to be integrated into society thank you So maybe we can go for Jason right now. So Jason, can you please share with us that um, you are from a um, like a country where the war is going? And I know I saw your some kind of tweets where I really it's break my heart that what kind of situation you are facing. So uh, can you please share with us some kind of more bold challenge or uh, things that actually we can solve or actually we can work on it? And beside this, what kind of work actually you're doing in DRC? Uh, thank you, Dola. Uh, je crois qu'il y, y, y a beaucoup de challenges, il y a beaucoup de difficultés auxquelles nous faisons face chaque jour et tant des acteurs du changement. Je, je commence déjà par dire que nous sommes contents de voir que tout, tout le monde, tous, comme nous sommes ici, chacun de nous, il fait des plaidoyers en notre faveur là où il est. Et c'est bien pour tout le monde, mais c'est encore plus dangereux pour nous parce que c'est euh, ce que nous vivons. Nous sommes déjà au milieu de ces conflits. Tout ce qu'il y a comme répercussion, on a subi facilement. 
Et on a connaît beaucoup de risques. Là, je peux dire facilement, par exemple, il faut que euh, je cherche les moyens pour rencontrer des autorités sur place, pour rencontrer des autorités de l'armée, pour exiger. Parfois même, il faut aller plus loin, exiger à partir des messages, des banderoles, ce qui se passe pour qu'on puisse résoudre des, pro des problèmes. Et parfois, ça tourne mal, ça ne tourne pas comme on s'y attend, comme dernièrement, par exemple, j'avais été emprisonné avec 78 autres euh, personnes qui étaient en train de faire la même chose pour essayer de réclamer cette paix. Après qu'on ait passé des journées sans étudier, après qu'on ait perdu nos frères, nos, nos collègues à l'école et nos parents, il fallait bien qu'on puisse quand même demander les paix de dignité qui peut rester. Mais en fait, on décide de nous emprisonner. Après, il faut qu'on puisse voir le président de la République lui dire en face, il y a des choses qui sont parfois difficiles à dire à une autorité en face parce qu'on a, on a nous-mêmes peur. Et là où on est dans les conflits, tout pourrait nous arriver à n'importe quel moment. Les gens pourraient se décider de nous sécuriser à n'importe quelle piste. Mais à ce niveau, je crois que avec tout ce qu'on rencontre comme difficulté, on essaie toujours de faire de notre mieux parce qu'il faut, il faut parfois se déplacer dans, dans des milieux où ça ne va pas pour essayer de rechercher les vraies informations, pour essayer de voir ce qui se passe. Nous-mêmes, quand on est en train de faire ces copées, il faut parfois qu'on écrive des choses qui, qui essaient de léser les autres parce que quand ils vont nous lire, que ce soit sur les réseaux, que ce soit dans, dans des CAS, ils n'essayent pas de nous comprendre comme ça se passe correctement et Parfois, ça peut ramener des injures, ça peut ramener des, des attaques. Mais ce qui nous reste de plus fort, ce qui nous reste de courage, c'est toujours notre capacité à essayer, malgré tout ce qu'on rencontre comme difficulté, d'être toujours là, d'essayer toujours de faire de notre mieux pour que les choses puissent changer. Parce qu'on estime que c'est vraiment important qu'on puisse faire en sorte que ces choses changent. Et quelle que soit la prise de risque, quel que soit tout ce qui peut arriver, avec l'aide de nous tous aussi, pour voir comment est-ce que ça peut, avec l'aide de nous tous, pour nous sécuriser, pour nous dire ça va aller, pour nous encourager, pour nous permettre encore d'aller plus loin que là où nous pouvons, plus loin que nos horizons, amener nos voies plus loin. C'est à partir de ça que nous restons toujours des acteurs du changement. Merci. Thank you so much, Jason. Maybe we can go for Miradi. Miradi, you want to speak? Can you share with us like what kind of challenges you are facing and Merci. what kind of things you are advocating? Like you are younger Merci. among us, so we are excited to hear from you. J'allais commenter à, à l'idée de pour Jason, il y a encore un défi qui leur. C'est comme ça qu'on avance dans la société. Ne dis pas que on ne peut pas parler aux autorités parce qu'on a peur. Tu dois enlever ta peur. Mais moi, j'ai affronté ces défis. Avant, j'avais peur de parler devant les gens. Mais euh, quand j'ai affronté ces défis, c'est comment euh, en, en faisant des plaidoyers, en faisant des plaidoyers, euh, y a, je, je m'ouvre dans la société. Il y a une ouverture qui me fait. Donc, j'ai une facilité à parler devant les autres. J'ai affronté ma peur parce que je savais que si j'avais peur, je n'allais pas avoir le but. Donc, Jason, okay. ne pas avoir peur. Crois okay. à ce que tu veux faire. Dis-toi que si je fais ceci, il y aura un changement dans ma société. Nous plaidons tous pour les changements de, de pays. Dans, dans mon pays, nous plaidons tous pour les changements de la société. Donc, ne pas avoir peur. Dis-toi que tu es un enfant parlementaire. Tu es la bouche des enfants vulnérables qui n'ont point de bouche. Donc, n'aie pas peur, affronte ces défis pour le bien-être de notre communauté tous. Merci. Thank 
thank you <laughs> maybe uh, thank you so much you are you're just a marvelous speaker i love to hear from you so maybe we can go for Budana next. Next, uh, can you please talk with us, Budana, about your advocacy work and what kind of challenges actually you're facing? Uh, yes, I want to say some about uh, what uh, challenges present for us. For us. It's a physical danger. Mind territories in territories liberated for occupation uh, <clears throat> or in the occupied territories, children are offered by money for helping the enemy. They put in bombs or tell secret information and because uh, they you uh, <clears throat> and they agree because of poverty and the fact that they, they are threatened. And in many cities of Ukraine, there is no education because of war and children are degraded and they have nothing to do. Oh, <clears throat> also, I want to tell about uh, children and feelings that they <laughs> about war. I had to help at some children's events and when children come, they are so upset and uh, shy. It's uh, very difficult for them to feel free and have fun. All, all of children have different and uh, each other wants need its own approach. So, I'm very grateful to all the organizations that support them and uh, make him fun. And uh, I think it's all. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing your um, works, like um, uh, about your challenges, about your journey so i really get inspired like what kind of powerful work you're doing and if someone asks me the same question that what kind of challenges i'm doing i'm i'm facing in my country like as i'm advocating on child marriage so maybe it's a very sensitive issue to work on that in bangladesh perspective so the challenges i'm facing like being a girl i'm facing some kind of safety issues like when i stop any kind of child marriage or any kind of thing maybe it's the camera sometimes uh, challenging things for me maybe I am I feel a bit insecure maybe community people can harm me or something like that and maybe another challenge we face like uh, sometimes some people don't want to hear us and they don't want to give us time like permissions to work or something like that so maybe this kind of challenges we are facing right now there is a lot of challenge will come but it's up to us that how we overcome so let's get back to our audience again so dear audience you have heard about our challenges now it's time to hear from you that what do you think like what you can do about those challenges or how we can actually overcome that and what kind of idea you can give us that how actually we can continue our advocacy work on child protections or child rights like we all the, all the time uh, we see that only young leaders like us share you with the ideas so right now it's your time being an adult, you are going to share with us some kind of ideas that how we can um, continue our advocacy work commitment today, you can give us that gonna be uh, effective or productive for us. If anybody has any kind of ideas, recommend nations or any kind of suggestions you can please drop it on the chat erica is going to read it for us and we are going to look on that that's uh, uh victoria do you want to say something uh, i want to say uh i want to, to say this um what I, we can do uh for us but uh, you say you need to write it so so i go and write it <laughs> sure but actually this question is for the audience but if you want to answer the question like you can also write it on the chat while we wait for for the questions to come in i know it takes people a minute or two to type i had a question um that is about how we one of the challenge one of the things i know we try to do is to get better at consulting with children and involving them in advocacy. But often, I, practitioners are afraid. They're afraid of, 
of the consultation um, and engagement because they are afraid that they will do harm. And so for safeguarding reasons, they, 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 they don't want to do harm, so they don't do it. So I would like to hear responses to, to that. Um, what you think of, of, of the idea that it does, it does it do harm or not? Uh, may I answer? Yes, please. Uh, I think um, you can just ask. You know, like if you communicate with people, with children, you can just ask, are you okay with uh, this or are you okay with this? I think uh, we need uh, children in um, these uh, programs with um, doing something uh, for other children because we are children and we understand what uh, need other children and we can communicate with other children or kids and if you don't know if it's okay to communicate with uh, yeah, like kids you can just ask are you okay with this or are you don't okay with this so i think so thank you that's very helpful for me i don't see other questions coming in um i don't uh, know dola if if you wanted to go to the I want, I want to answer. Oh, yes maybe we can move next yeah jason do you want to say something yes i i want to uh, to add something uh, yeah sure je crois que les humanitaires ce sont ce sont des personnes à qui on a on se doit à cette collaboration puisque loin de nos gouvernements loin des personnes qui doivent nous répondre les humanitaires sont toujours là pour nous et je crois que échanger sur n'importe quel sujet ce sont des choses à quoi on essaie de s'habituer puisque il faut qu'on puisse trouver des réponses concrètes et c'est à travers cette collaboration cet échange que nous avons que nous pouvons avoir des décisions qui sont importantes pour nous-mêmes et pour le monde entier, pour les générations futures aussi. C'est que généralement, si vous avez de quoi nous demander, de quoi nous reprocher, c'est toujours une faveur de les avoir. Et à notre tour de répondre et d'essayer de faire en sorte que tout ce que nous avons comme message se passe dans la, meilleure, euh, dans la mesure du possible et dans la meilleure des manières. Donc je crois que l'état humanitaire, l'état que nous les affaires, on se doit cette collaboration, on se doit cette assente, cette compréhension. Et nous sommes toujours prêts à, à recevoir tout ce que vous avez comme message et à voir comment est-ce qu'on pourrait interchanger, quel que soit que ça peut, ça peut blesser, si ce sont des vérités qui peuvent nous aider à propulser ou à trouver des solutions sur nos problèmes. Je crois que c'est vraiment important puisque le problème est qu'ils n'attendent jamais les gens. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe we can now uh, move on our next sessions. Like we are going to almost we are, are like almost end of the session. So right now we are going to open the um, um text pool where like our I would like to request our audience like today's from today's sessions what you have actually learned and what you are going to actually practice in your life. Okay, so maybe our audience is going to put on that and before uh, uh, this, and maybe I can share with you the closing remarks and we are almost end of our sessions actually. So thank you so much everyone for being with us and with you for uh, three hours, I was Dola and I'm very much happy to be a part of this event and thanks to World Vision for inviting me as a host here. So if I made any kind of mistakes or any kind of things or anything that hurts you, please accept my apologies and please keep us in your prayer and try to remember just one thing that we all are humans and you are saying that you are working in a humanitarian organization where you're actually working for us. So when we are asking something from you, you should remember that if you are working for us, you have you should have time for us to hear our voices and make some kind of actions on that. And beside this, I would like to ask you that in the yeah, starting of the event, I asked you what was your dream when you were a child. So right now, if you want, you can put it on the chat. I want to see that what was your dream when you were a child. 
our young leaders, you can also put it on the chat. So maybe thousands of people have thousands of dreams, but just think about from your side, a children who is in UK, Ukraine, or who is in a country where the war is going on. And if is she or he is getting chance to see the dream, maybe yes, or maybe not, because maybe they are just waiting that when the war is going to end, when the situation is going to be normal, when they'll get a normal life. So we hope that the situation will be normal very soon and your support for the Ukraine or the uh, or for any kind of children who are victim of those things is going to be there as soon as possible. And your commitment is going not to be as a commitment, it's going to be like in actions. So we request you when you are working for us, try to be with us and try to work with us so that maybe we can make a bridge for the children who are having this kind of problem. Every children has rights to see a dream and every children has rights to have some kind of protection. Thank you so much for being with us. Assalamu alaikum. So Manami, it's up to you. Maybe the floor is for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tola, and all the speakers for your wonderful session. And uh, um, particularly, I saw, I saw many comments in the chat that um, we appreciate that for you being so brave to be here and also sharing your stories. So we'll, look for, looking, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in the next session as well as the networking session there. Enjoy your break. Mm -hmm.